Hi everyone, so it's Heather Fab one more time um, coming to you live from Okinawa in Japan and I stopped by briefly to just share a word with you and the word is based on a question that someone, a relative of mine actually asked me recently. So the question was, should Christians go to karaoke and the question is not a strange question as a matter of fact it's a question that is asked for different things um relating to christians so like should christians go to parties should christians go to the beach should christians go to the movies um should christians drink alcohol so many questions of things whether or not Christians should do. And I'm sure that there are so many of you who are asking the same questions today. Um, and especially as a young believer, it's important that these questions are answered, but um, sometimes the atmosphere is not created for them to be answered appropriately. And I just want to take a job at trying as best as possible to answer your question, whether it is you're asking about karaoke or party or alcohol or whichever thing you're asking about. The simple answer is that there is no yes or no answer for a lot of these things. Some of them are clear cut. You don't even need to ask about them. And I'm not even going to mention any by name because as believers, we all have the Spirit of God dwelling in us and He is teaching us, He is guiding us, He is telling us. If we're spending time in the Word and if we're listening to Him when He speaks to us, He speaks through His Word, He speaks through godly counsel, godly counsel, which also is in accordance with His Word. He speaks through His audible voice which also is in accordance with his word. It agree with his word. Um, and he speaks to us through, there's, there are four of them. He speaks to us through his word. He speaks through godly counsel. He speaks through his audible voice. And there's another one that I can't remember now, but those three are, are yeah, if you remember those three, right? So if, if we're walking with him and we're spending time in his word, he's speaking to us, trust me. We're just stubborn and want to do the things that we want to do. But if we really listen, he's always speaking. So listen to him. So the fact that the Holy Spirit is living in us, we know our spirit. The spirit part of us is the part of us that has been 100% renewed, made new, complete, changed, no need, nothing. Okay, exactly as God is. That's how the spirit man is in us. But the truth is that we're living in the flesh. And we're always, the flesh is always at war against the spirit. And so some of the things that the flesh desires, they're not in keeping with what the spirit needs, with what the spirit desires. And so there's always this war in us as believers. And we have to determine, we have to make a decision as to which of these we're going to allow to dominate or to rule us. And if we subject ourselves to the spirit of God, the spirit of us that has been renewed, we'll walk in accordance with the design, the plan that God has for each of us as individuals. So sometimes when we're asking these questions, we really ought not to be asking them because the Holy Spirit is telling us, you know, you really shouldn't go there or you shouldn't do this or you should do this or you, you should do that. But we don't listen or we want to we want to use other people's experiences to determine what we should or shouldn't do. So my answer is listen to the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit saying to you? And if you do something, let's let's say you go to karaoke and the Spirit of God is in you. He's living in you and he's talking to you. Is he comfortable at karaoke? 
What happens at karaoke? Is it something that is magnifying the name of the Lord? When you go, um, let's say you go and you sing a song at karaoke. The song that you sing, is it magnifying God or is it magnifying your flesh, yourself? Or is it elevating the things that God is saying? Those things are wrong. You know what I mean? So sometimes it takes a little, just, just take a step back and look at the thing. And determine whether it is the ultimate thing for me is to determine whether that thing that you do or say, is it glorifying to God or is it magnifying self? And if it is glorifying, magnifying self, then you really ought not to be doing it. So the truth is that you can be at home in the quiet of your home and still not be magnifying God. So it's not so much about where you are as to what you're doing and what you're entertaining, what you're allowing into your spirit, what you're feeding your eyes and your ears to and your spirits. What is it that you're feeding yourself on? So if you can be at home and corrupt your spirit, you can be at work and corrupt your spirit, you can be out with friends and corrupt your spirit. It doesn't matter where you are, but the ultimate is is what I'm doing glorifying God or is it bringing, you know, making me bigger, making people see me, making people recognize and acknowledge me? Is that my aim? Is that what I want? Or do I want people to see the Christ in me? Um, Psalms 1 talks about um, standing in the ways of sinners. So how... In what way am I standing in the way of sinners? And um, there are so many ways to look at this because, I mean, people are always going to be people and always going to be critical of us as believers. And where you fit do, and where you not fit do, and where you fit say, and where you not fit say. But we know in and of ourselves when we're doing things that are not pleasing to God and we have to be honest with ourselves, right? So my ultimate answer is, just examine that one thing and ask the question, how does Christ feel about this? If, if he was a physical man like I am, would he be pleased with going with me to this place? Or would he be pleased with what I've been saying or what I've been doing? You know what I mean? So ask those questions because the truth is that he is with you. He's with me. He's with us all the time. And he's seeing and he's hearing and he's expressing some emotion, whether sadness or regret or joy, you know. So examine the individual situation or the circumstance or, you know, whatever it is that you're questioning and see how, how does Christ feel about this? Of course, it's important to seek godly counsel, but always, always, always. And never ever um, lose a moment to say to individuals, your answer is always in the word, trust me. It might not spell out like, say, John Brown, don't go a karaoke. Or John Brown, go a karaoke tonight. It, it won't be spelled out like that. But your spirit bears witness to what God is saying to you. And he always confirms his word. You know, just tell you one time. And then done. Just like some of my parents want to tell them one sitting. One time, how oh, much time if we tell her the same thing? You know, God confirms his word with us so many, in so many ways, through different um, means. So listen to him. Make him tell you and make your spirit bear witness. And use that as your guide for everything, whether karaoke or beach or alcohol or any of the things that you would ask about, you know. Would would is is this magnifying to God or is it magnifying me? All right, so God bless you guys. I love you. Um, thank you for joining me on this journey and continue to keep me in your prayers and I will continue to pray for you. Love you, love you, love you, and thanks once again. God bless. See ya.